Okay, this is a um, presentation by uh, Mr. Martin on uh, in algebra on ratio and proportion. And what I'm going to do is give you a couple slides from a PowerPoint and then I'm going to uh, continue on on the uh, document camera. So um, we have some definitions and I want you to take these down in your notebook and you can be listening to this on your own computer and just pause it when you need to. So to start I want you to write down what a ratio is and a ratio is comparing two numbers or quantities by division. Um, so, you know, I can compare 3 to 4. Um, and so here's the way I can do it. I can represent it as A, the word 2, T O B, or A colon B, or A over B, if I'm using variables. Or if I'm using numbers, I, like, I can say 3 to 4, or 3 colon 4, or 3 uh, over 4, or 3 fourths. Uh, as you see, ratios are also fractions. So I'm just comparing one number, here 3, uh, and other number 4 by the operation of division. Now, a rate is a ratio where the quantities are measured in different units. So instead of just numbers, I might have a unit like miles, and I'm dividing it by something else like hours. So I could have, you know, I go 50 miles in two hours. Uh, if I'm comparing those things, it's 50 miles uh, over or divided by two hours. Or I could have $3 divided by two pounds. Um, or I could have, if I'm measuring my typing speed, I could um, type 500 words in... 10 minutes, okay? Uh, now, a unit rate is the third definition here. So it's a type of rate where the denominator is one. So for example, let's go back to this rate here. I have 50 miles over two hours. Well, instead of leaving it like that, I'm going to do the division and reduce this, or I'm going to uh, do it so that I have the denominator is one. I still have the unit, one hour, but it's going to be one. So I go 50 divided by 2, it's 25. So I have 25 miles per hour, uh, or 25 miles divided by one hour. I can get rid of the one and just say 25 miles uh, divided by hour. Or the way we say this division bar is we say miles per hour. So this is 25 miles per hour. Again, the fraction bar means division. Or if I'm, um, you know, up here, let's say I bought three pounds of uh, peaches, uh, two pounds of peaches for $3, then that's $3 divided by two pounds. And down here I did the division and I get $1.50 uh, per one pound or $1.50 per pound. So unit rate is where the denominator, the bottom of the fraction, is equal to one. Now, let me give you a few examples of how we work these out. So, I buy five pounds of peaches. I tend to like peaches, so I guess I'm picking peaches a lot, for $8. So, I go over here. If it's money involved, usually the money goes on top. We're interested in how many dollars per pound, or how many dollars per liter, or how many dollars per kilogram, something like that. So, here we take the... Uh, eight dollars we divide it by five pounds you know I could just plug you know, I could work that out by hand or I could just plug it into a calculator eight divided by five is 1.6 and it's dollars here's the unit per pound divided by pound another example let's say I travel 20 miles on a bicycle in two and a half hours well I take to get the unit rate I take 20 miles divided by 2.5 hours and I get 8 miles per hours or 8 uh, miles divided by hours. Your book also 
It goes into a little bit about uh, the formula distance is equal to rate times time, um, which you may be familiar with. So, for example, if I'm traveling 60 miles per hour and I travel for two hours, so 60 miles per hour in two hours, I multiply those together and I get 120, and the units happen to be miles per hour. Um, so, you know, if I'm traveling on the freeway at 60 miles per hour going north from San Diego, and two hours I'm 120 miles north, then I'm probably in Los Angeles. Um, so, since distance is equal rate times time, if you know the unit rate and the time, you can find the distance. So here's another example. I bicycle three hours at a unit rate of eight miles per hour. Well, distance is equal rate times time. I take the rate, eight miles per hour, times three hours, and look what happens to units. Units cancel just like numbers. I have hour as a factor down below here and hour as a factor down here. These two things cancel, okay? The hours here and the hours here cancel, okay? And I'm left with miles, and I have 8 times 3, or 24 miles. So that helps me know that I did indeed find the distance. So it's 24 miles. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is something called dimensional analysis. And for dimensional analysis, or the book also calls it unit analysis, uh, I'm going to uh, get out of the PowerPoint and switch to the Elmo now. So let me get this up and let me get this back where it belongs here. So the topic here is dimensional and let me zoom out a little bit here, I'm zooming in. Um, the topic is dimensional analysis. And dimensional analysis is all about converting units. I'm going to start with um, just some really simple things. And this is, let's say I have uh, 50 miles. And I'm, that's not a rate yet, but we're going to do some things with rates, but I'm not going to do it right now. But let's just say I have 50 miles, and I want to know how many feet that is. So I want to know how many feet that is. Well, first of all, I have to know how many feet are in a mile. But that's something I do remember, and I recommend you do remember. So there's 5,280 feet uh, in one mile. So to do this, I'm going to take 50 miles. And I'm going to times it by one. I can always time something by one and not change it, right? So I'm going to times it by one in a very special way. I know that there's the 5,280 feet is equal to one mile. So I'm going to put in, in either the denominator or numerator 5,280 and in the other place, I'm going to put one mile. Well, how I choose that is I want to get rid of the miles here. So I'm going to put one mile down below because then my miles will cancel. So the miles are going to cancel. But, and so I'm going to put my 5,280 feet up here. And lo and behold, the miles cancel. The feet are up here. So all I need to do now is take out my calculator and multiply 50 times 5,280. And so I'm going to do that. So 50 times 2, I'm sorry, let's cancel that. 50 times 5,280. And I get, and you may not be able to see that, but that's not important. I get 2 six four zero 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 feet. So I know that fifty miles is the same as two thousand six hundred uh, two I'm sorry, two hundred and sixty four thousand feet. 
And this is really useful because I don't have to think about, should I multiply or divide or whatever? This helps me know what I need to do. Now, dimensional analysis can get even more complicated with rates. And with rates, it's a wonderful thing uh, to uh, figure out uh, or to use. Um, so let's say I have a rate like 30 miles per hour. And by the way, you're going to use this a lot in, in chemistry, in physics, in high school. And if you take those courses in college also, you're going to use this a lot. So let's say I have 30 miles per hour. And I want to know how many feet per second that is. Okay? Well, this is what we're going to do using dimensional analysis. I write down my 30 miles per hour. And I'm going to multiply it by 1 here. And I know I want seconds. So I know, first of all, I know in 1 hour, so I want to get rid of the hour there. In 1 hour, there are 60 minutes, right? Well, now I'm going to have miles per minute because the hours are going to cancel. I'm getting closer. Well, I'm going to multiply it again by, I'm going to put minutes up here. I know in one minute there are 60 seconds. So I put that there. So that's pretty good too because now I can get my minutes and right now I'm left with miles per second, so I'm getting closer. And over here, I know I want feet, so I'm going to put one mile down here. And then my miles are going to cancel. But one mile, because I have to do this by one each time, is 5,280 feet. And again, just to reiterate, the reason I can multiply one hour over 60 minutes is because those two things are equal, and so it's equal to one. I got the same, you know, the equivalent thing over the equivalent thing is equal to one. One minute is equal to 60 seconds, so that's equal, this thing here, all this is equal to one, so I can do that. I have 5,280 feet, that's equal to one mile, so these two things are equal, so I can do that too, okay? So this is multiplying by one. So basically, I'm having this 30 miles per hour. I'm just multiplying it by 1 repeatedly and then canceling. But look what I have left. I have feet per second, and that's what I want. So now I have 30 times 5,280. And then at the bottom, I have 60 and 60. So if I go get my calculator out and do all this math, um, a lot of glare there, but that's okay. I'm going to go on and I'm going to go 30 times 5,280. Uh, I could go divided by 60, divided by 60, and I get 44. So apparently this is equal to 44. And again, I said feet per second. And you can do this with all sorts of kinds of units. I'll just leave that one for there now. Now, this section also deals with proportion. And you know this from pre-algebra. A proportion, and that's why we're going through this pretty much, a proportion is simply two equal ratios. So I can say uh, something like AB is a ratio is equal to CD is another ratio. So those are, I put rations, ratios. So AB is equal to, uh, A over B is equal to C over D. It's a proportion. One way to read this is A is to B as C is to D. You not, might know in like standardized tests often they have, you know, analogies, you know, something is to something is something is to something else. 
Well, that's sort of like what a proportion is. Um, in this thing, this is sort of odd language, but you see it, you run into it sometimes. The A and D are called the extremes of the proportion. And the B and C are called the means. And um, so you um, sometimes hear that about the means and extremes, which is sort of odd language, but you see that a little bit. Well, the important thing uh, to know about proportions, or one of many important things, is, well, first of all, let's see. We can know if something forms a proportion if we, let's see, uh, let's say I don't know whether that's a proportion or not. I do because there's a couple ways I do. First of all, if I reduce this and it reduces to the same thing, um, then it's a proportion. So I know that 9 twelfths will reduce. I could divide top and bottom by 3 and it reduces to 3 fourths. So it's a proportion. I could also multiply top and bottom by the same number here, 3, and get this. So that would tell me it's a proportion. But another way that you have learned is what's called cross products. So I'm going to write that here. And so cross products. Cross products de deals with where we have you know, a proportion, two equal ratios, we have an equal sign here. So cross products means that if I have 3 times 12, and that, if that's equal to 4 times 9, um, then that is a proportion. So 3 times 12 is 36. 4 times 9 is 36. So one way to tell if this is a proportion is do cross products. And if they're the same, it is a proportion. Well, that comes in really handy in this. And that is, let's say we have something like x is to 3 as um, 5 is to 12. Okay? And I want to know what x is. So the way I can find what x is, I can use cross products here. So I know, you know, I've been told, that, well, this is a proportion, so I can go 12 times x, okay, those are what we call the extremes, is equal to 3 times 5, or 12x is equal to 15, divide both sides by 12, and I get x is equal to 15 over 12, or reduce that, um, this can be divided by 3, this is divided by 3, and I get 5 fourths, okay? So that's what x is equal to. So I can use cross products to, as a way to solve a, um, a proportion. So I'm going to do another one because the book, well, I'll do an easy one first. So it says solve a proportion. Let's say I have x over 4 is equal to 25 over 12. So I do cross products. 12 times x is equal to 4 times 25, um, or I get 12x is equal to 100. Divide each side by 12, and um, I that's e well that's equal 50 over 6 or 25 over 3 so that's 25 thirds and uh, I will just leave it at that okay so x is equal to 25 thirds and so that's how we can use cross products to um, solve this proportion now it gets it can be more complicated than that so I'm going to use an example in the book um, in the book, they have x plus 4 over 5 is equal to x minus 2 over 7. Well, to get rid of these things in the denominator, the easy way to do things is just use cross products. So I'm going to have 7 times x plus 4 
is equal to 5 times x minus 2. I'm going to use cross products. I'm going to get, it, well, I'm going to use distributive property now. I'm going to get 7x plus 28 is equal to 5x minus 10. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. I get 2x plus 28 is equal to a negative 10. I'm going to subtract 28 from both sides. And I get 2x is equal to negative, um, negative 38. Divide both sides by 2. And I get x is equal to negative 19. OK, so that covers most of the material uh, about ratios and proportions, uh, much of which is a review from prior years. And I will uh, give you some uh, problems to do. But with that, I will go ahead and end this video.